What's going on, folks? Happy Sunday morning. This is Brandon here with Low T Nation, and I uh, let me get this camera right here. I uh, just doing a little Q and A on all things HRT, like weight loss, peptide, you name it, man. ED, anything in the the realm of hormone replacement, um, you know, metabolic enhancement. Y'all, uh, y'all, let me know what your questions are, man. I'd be more than happy to. Uh, to answer anything, uh, anything you got. That's the answer to your question about what am I blubbering about. <laughs> All right. One of the things I wanted to talk about today, I talked about this a couple days ago on a live, is um, if you guys haven't seen this yet, you will very shortly. There was a guy who just did a hundred days on um, a McDonald's only diet and he absolutely killed it. He lost like 60 pounds, his cholesterol dropped like 65 points, fasting glucose went down, obviously A1C did as well, his inflammation markers went down and that is in a hell of a stark contrast to the guy that did the supersize me experiment a few years ago. I'm sure most of you guys remember that. Um, that guy ate McDonald's for 30 days right every meal for 30 days and he gained 24 pounds he ended up with with acute fatty liver issues felt like ass he just completely felt terrible and um like what's the difference man they both ate the exact same food they both ate the you know exact same nutritional garbage um one guy lost weight right literally all of his metabolic markers improved one guy got fat and everything decreased um, the only difference was calories, right? The guy that did it very recently, the 100 days, he was only eating half a meal three times a day and totaling about 1,500 calories. The supersize me guy, he said yes to every time they said, do you want to supersize it? He's actually the reason that supersize me experiment was the reason McDonald's doesn't do the supersize thing anymore. But um, he said yes every time. He got the extra large Coke, again, a sweet Coke, not diet. He got extra large fries and he ate the whole meal every single time, whether that was like a 20 piece nugget or a double quarter pounder or whatever. Um, fell apart, right, metabolically. The only difference is calories. And this is one thing that we teach so much with our weight loss is that it just comes down to calories. Nutrition is important. We don't, we're not trying to disregard nutrition, but if you're trying to lose fat in the short term, focus more on your calories than the actual content of your food and you will be, um, you'll be good to go. I do not want these people joining. Um, and so it's a, it's a big, big deal, right? Focus on macros, focus on calories, less about the, the components of the food, and then way less on these fucking knuckleheads that are talking about, oh, well, kale is unhealthy because of this, and oatmeal is unhealthy because of this, and they have these negative nutrients, and they have, I'm like, man, just focus on your macros and your calories, and you'll start losing weight when you get that calorie deficit uh, dialed in. Don't go too steep, right, because we'll shut our metabolism down, but yeah, that's... Uh, Am I on Taz, Deca, D-Ball, Trend, Clint, Winnie, and Var? Yes, no, 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 no. And so I will occasionally, uh, I've got busted joints, man. I've been through two ACLs and I have a torn one now and I've snapped both of my Achilles. So I get hurt, you know what I mean? A lot when, uh, when I exercise, I'm, I'm a jujitsu guy and like I'm doing Mount Everest in October. So when I'm training hard, I do run a little bit of Deca just to keep my joints feeling well. But, um, you know, that's, uh, I'm not the biggest proponent of any of those others unless you're just, you know, if you're a bodybuilder, I mean, you kind of have to unless you're going to go natty. And if you're going to go natty, you don't need it, right? So it's one of those things. If you're going to play in the deep waters of the non-tested um, competition, then you're either going to have to do it or you're not going to be very good. So let me see. How does it feel, men, to know that's what you're using? see how it's for everyone I don't understand what that means you do sound like a talking robot all right but one thing that we're getting a <laughs> is 168 too low is that a total testosterone yeah that's I don't know anything about you but that's too low um, it's a big deal man testosterone keeps your brain intact It's very cardio protective it's very neuroprotective it is um, incredibly osteoprotective as we get older, and it also helps keep our metabolisms up by keeping lean muscle on us and keeping energy levels up. And when you can keep metabolism and energy up, you keep waistline down. And when you keep waistline down, you keep all those mortality indicators that are associated with metabolic syndrome, you keep them pushed off. And um, 
you know, at the end of the day, man, um, waist circumference is the number one mortality indicator. That's not up for arguing. That's just, um, that's 100% truth. It's been proven a million times. And so because of that, anything you can do to keep your waist down, right, it's going to help you live longer. So we want to do that. Testosterone obviously helps. But again, it stays off neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. It is incredibly cardioprotective. It's just the best thing ever, man. And uh, all right. I don't need any additional hormones to feel like a man. Good for you, talking robot. I think I'm going to block you, buddy. You keep saying dumb shit. There we go. All right. Any intelligent questions or comments? Um, one of the things that we, we got a lot of traction with the other day, too, is we were talking about all the various peptides that we use. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. 46 and a waist of 36 inches. That's not bad, I mean, depending on your height. But, um, you know, it's, it's just basics, man. These guys want to get super complicated on this stuff, and it's just basics. Keep your protein up. Do some resistance training, get some steps in, sleep well, manage your stress, and life kind of gets easy. You know, when you try to overcomplicate these things, they fall apart big time. And so, um, yeah, man. So Stone just said TB500 is on point for injury. It absolutely is. Um, it's called Thymus and Beta 500. There's also a, a subcomponent of that, which is called Thymus and Beta 4. They're both fantastic, especially in conjunction with something called BPC-157. If you guys are dealing with nagging injuries, you know, whether it's ligament, cartilage, tendon, they are absolutely phenomenal. They don't do too much for any kind of a muscle tear, but for any kind of cytoblast or fibroblast remodeling, um, it is amazing. So if you guys get dinged up, um, you know, they uh, keep that in mind. And yeah, the, the two comments here, like stress, that's the big thing, and sleep well is the hardest one. They are, you know. I throw these out there, like, oh, just do this, right? It's, those things are tough, especially when you got a lot of shit going on in your life. Um, we put cortisol on our test. We don't treat any kind of Addison's or Graves disease or anything on the outside of the spectrum, but when we see cortisol up, the question that we start asking is, hey, man, what's your stress like in your life? And these guys are like, bro, I'm going through a divorce. I'm going through a bankruptcy. My kid is sick. My mom's having a heart attack every three months, and I'm just so stressed out. And we ask those questions because some guys, sometimes guys will say, hey, man, this testosterone therapy is not doing anything for me. But when you're going through that, like when you're dealing with that, nothing's going to fix that, right? So managing stress, managing sleep, um, critical. And, yeah, man, it's not easy. You know, we do have some peptides that help with that um, there's one called ipamorelin compounded with cjc 1295 it is a hell of a sleep aid as well as a growth hormone producing agent um, it helps build muscle it's lipoactive which means it, it burns fat and it is fantastic for sleep there's also a peptide peptide called dsip dsip it's a deep sleep inducing peptide and um for guys that struggle with sleep, man, it is a godsend. And both of these peptides, I've taken both of them, um, you don't wake up like lost and confused and groggy like you do with an Ambien. You know, with an Ambien, you can wake up in your damn garage and not know how you got out there. You know, you're like, what the hell? And you're texting your ex and, or and ordering shit off of Amazon. Um, these, you don't get those kind of weird, wonky side effects. It's just when you get into those deeper stages of sleep, it just really helps you stay there, but you can wake up easy. It's not like a GHB where you're going to get date raped on these things either. So they are absolutely um, awesome. So lies, there's always something people try to sell you last year. It's testosterone, now it's peptides. Well, that's that's one opinion. I mean, obviously, we are a, the testosterone clinic. Lower the reverb. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, is that better, guys? Hopefully. But, uh, yeah, we are a clinic, man, and we sell stuff. But we sell stuff that changes people's lives. And the trick to... Uh, the trick to knowing if a clinic is legit or not is understanding their business practices, right? Do they gouge you up front? Do they charge big consultation fees? Do they lock you into contracts? Um, the way we roll is we ask guys to pay a hundred bucks for the initial lab panel. That actually costs us a couple dollars more than that, believe it or not. 
Um, we lose money on the labs. You get a free consultation. And if you sign up with us, there's never a contract. So it becomes our job to make you feel as well as you possibly can. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, test absolutely does make a lot of people feel better. But sometimes guys need additional things. They're trying to put on muscle and their testosterone levels are fine right or they're trying to sleep better right but their testosterone levels are fine or they're trying to lose weight you know but their testosterone levels are fine um, the answer is not always just more testosterone and more testosterone sometimes we have to parlay into hey like check out this weight loss option or hey check out this peptide for building muscle or this peptide for building sleep so it's not just as simple as going more is better with testosterone because at some point it is for a while right but then you keep going and more becomes much worse because guys were uh, running into so many side effects. So Jimbo says that TRT has changed everything. I'm only on it for two months now. Yeah. You know, you know, man, this is why I love this shit so much. Uh, eight years ago, I owned an internet marketing company. I kind of focused in the medical space, and I picked up a testosterone clinic as a client. They were like, hey, will you market us? And I said, yeah, sure. And I kind of dove in on their model and started marketing them, and I fell in love with it just because of what it did for the guys, you know. Um, and this was like eight years ago. There were no testosterone clinics eight years ago. So in the Southeast, we were the first ones to do it because I saw this clinic in Texas doing it and I just fell in love with the results that these guys were getting. And I was like, man, that's what I want to do. So that's what we did it. And so SMAC says, I'm a member and low T is awesome. Love the program. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. We appreciate you. Um, it will convert to estrogen too when high. Yeah, that's where estrogen comes from in the male body. Um, most guys can carry a boatload of estrogen, and estrogen is incredibly beneficial to men. Incredibly. Protects your bones, protects your hearts, helps you sleep, gives you good erections, and when you get testosterone too low, guys feel terrible, right? Also, when you get testosterone too high, guys feel terrible, but too high is very relative to the individual, right? So your estrogen level, my estrogen levels, I can come in at 100 and I feel great. The other guys get to 60 and their nipples are killing them and they're, they're retaining all this water and they're feeling emotional, um, you know, so it's just, we evaluate every patient individually and figure out um, what's going on with their estrogen levels. The best weight loss peptide, without a doubt, is semaglutide. It's Wagovi or Ozempic um, by the brand names, and it is the best weight loss drug ever, right? Don't believe all this bullshit where people say, oh, it's causing this and it's causing that. Yeah, everything done wrong, right, will cause a problem. If you drink too much water, you die, right? It, I mean, it's, it's a known thing. I think we kind of need water. Um, when you go in too much of a deficit, too hard, too fast, for too long, and you're not eating anything, and you're shutting your metabolism down, and you're you're catabolizing all your lean body mass, yeah, that's terrible. But it's not the drug; it's the amount of drug and the duration and the way it's going is the way it's being applied is the problem. And so, all right, what else? Been on it since 2019 and no side effects. That means that they're. Uh, that's a good program. And so, uh, I love these success stories, guys. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, you can call us. You said, where can you get that? If you check out lowtnation.com, and guys, I'm not on here to peddle our products. I'm literally on here just to give free advice today. But if you do, if you are interested in some stuff, um, feel free. Just go ahead and go to Low T Nation. You can see the products we have. Also, guys, if you don't mind, you know, give us some love on the, the likes and the shares with this live that way uh we're trying to get this information out there there's so much broken just just bullshit out there with all the bro science number one and then all the doctors that have no idea what they're talking about just perpetuating garbage i want to get a lot of the truth um you know put in place where it needs to be so um stone man you're the best i appreciate you all right, we have another guy, 28 male, lift regularly, T is 291, LH and FSH normal, SHBG low, and prolactin is high, TRT indicated. Um, probably, yeah. I mean, it's, we, want, we, would, we, would know, we would need to know about your symptoms, right? What symptoms are you dealing with? If you felt amazing at that 291, you're not indicated, right? But if you're like, man, I'm exhausted, I'm having libido issues, um, can't add muscle, I'm losing, you know, I'm getting fat, like, yeah, big time. But the numbers by themselves don't necessarily indicate somebody unless they're just grossly obvious. Some guys get by on those numbers. Most guys don't, though. That 291, we keep most guys somewhere between, like, 900 to 1,200, and they feel so much better. So, 
Um, 41 got tested. I was at 300. Been on it eight months. Now at 1300, I feel great. Yep. Tank. That's the uh, that's the normal story that we hear. Some guys get on it and it takes them a while to kind of get dialed in. We need to figure out exactly what to do with their estrogen. We need to figure out exactly where they need to be to be optimal. But yeah, man, you know, you get most guys above, you know, like a thousand, um, get their estrogen level, you know, at a good high level, like 40 to 60 or something like that, and then just get out of their way. Um, now they got motivation to go back to the gym. One of the things that, that made a big impact on me a couple years ago, a guy called us and he goes, hey man, I've sat in the gym parking lot twice this week for 30 minutes and I sat in the parking lot and I didn't go in. He goes, I just don't have the motivation and the energy because I'm trying to apply the discipline but I don't have the motivation to back it up. Um, he got on testosterone and in about three weeks he was back in the gym. He knew what to do. Right, his body was even. I mean, he was trying to go through the motion. He just didn't have the energy to do it. And so, um, this will give you the energy to do all the things that you know you're supposed to do. Right? It brings that motivation back. It brings the discipline back a little bit. Just because you have the energy to go. All right, let's go. Like, let's get up and go. So, um, you have too much growth hormone in your body, probably from test. No, test doesn't turn into growth hormone. Growth hormone is a pituitary produced hormone. Um, there's something called acromeglia, which is a, um, it, it's a pituitary adenoma. The word tumor is scary, right? But it's, they're benign. Um, but if that little tumor is on the a particular part of your pituitary that makes growth hormone, you will have, you will have a condition called acromeglia and it will produce too much growth hormone in your body. Um, you want to get that looked at by an endocrinologist. They can ablate those, um, those little tumors. And get rid of that adenoma and get rid of that problem. You can also have something what's called a, a growth hormone releasing hormone active pituitary adenoma and that will also drive downstream growth hormone production uh, but it's not testosterone related at all and so I hope that helps. Thoughts on Cialis? It is the best men's ED drug ever and uh, we use daily use Cialis because the issue is um, when you when you give somebody a, like, like Viagra, right, they have a four hour window. So you have to give them the whole dose right then. So that's a big rush of vasodilation. That's where all the side effects come from. Migraines, headaches, blurred vision, all these things. Guys turn beet red. Um, with Cialis, the, the PRN, which means the as needed dose is like 20 milligrams. And that's a big rush also. And some guys go, man, I take blood pressure, I take uh, Cialis and I just feel like crap. Like every time I take it, well, What's amazing about Cialis, Viagra lasts four hours, right? It's in and out, it's gone. Um, Cialis lasts three to four days in the body. So you can take little doses every day and it stair steps up to a big amount in your body, a good amount in your body, but you never introduce that huge rush of vasodilation all at once that causes the side effects. So we start guys on this, even guys that say, man, I've taken Cialis before, I feel terrible on it, I don't want it. We say, just try, you know, just a couple of days, try this little daily use pill and all of a sudden they're back. And the beauty of daily use Cialis, I take it every day. I keep it next to my toothbrush. Every morning I brush my teeth. I take a little piece of that trochee and I'm good to go. Um, I never have to worry about spontaneity. It's always there every time you need it. You're also getting a lot more nocturnal and morning erections and that's great exercise for the penis. It's literally all it can do. Um, but as we get older, we, it's a proven fact, guys, penises get smaller because you stop having erections, right? So this brings that back into play. But you don't have to like time it and keep a pill in your pocket and you know worry about, oh, am I getting this right from a from a frequency or a timing perspective as well. That's awesome. All right. <clears throat> and so Joshua said, or before that, Stone said it helps with blood pressure too. It is literally on label for blood pressure. A lot of doctors are taking guys off of like 10 milligram Cialis, or excuse me, 10 milligram lisinopril, uh, which is a, an antihypertensive, it's a blood pressure med, and putting them on Cialis instead because of the additional benefits. It's healthy for your prostate, it's healthy for your blood pressure, it's healthy for your sex life and your, your penile health as well, so it's awesome. Um, Joshua said he started taking some oil and, and had massive cramps. It's not really common, no. If you're going to consider some oil and, I would say consider Ipamorlin along with CJC1295. Um, some oil and a lot of times is compounded with something called GHRP2 or GHRP6, but that compound kicks off the growth hormone production 
in the body and the semoralin doesn't allow it to stop so basically like the ghrp it opens the door and semoralin is the wedge that you put under the door to keep it open right but it only lasts like 20 minutes well if you get ipamorlin and compound it with cjc cjc kicks the door open and ipamorlin becomes the wedge but it lasts four hours and so for that reason that half-life difference we grossly prefer ipamorlin and we see much much better results um, the the cramps i would assume um, are unrelated but also a lot of times things when you start taking medications like you're in the gym more some other things will change all at once and so i would kind of look at those adjacent changes more than the the samoralin itself um and so man cheers mate 72 thank you i really appreciate that that's awesome all right electrolytes i you know i'm a big if you're an athlete guys you cannot hardly get enough sodium sodium gets a bad rap um you know but you, there's electrolyte drinks there's electrolyte mixes to go in drinks you can also just put salt in your water and some of these like cave salts and Himalayan sea salts they have trace minerals with that that kind of span the electrolyte spectrum um, use those but one thing to keep in mind um, don't get rid of iodized salt in your house either because iodine is crazy important in our body it's actually the foundation that all of our thyroid hormone comes from so a lot of guys get into an iodine deficiency when they switch over to the electrolyte heavy salts um, just because they're not iodized. That's literally why the government iodizes salt, why the government allows for iodized salt is to keep our thyroid production up. And so how many milligrams daily? I'm, I think we're talking about Cialis on that. Um, we recommend five to six milligrams daily starting out for most guys. And what that does is tremendous from a sexual most guys they can have moderate to like now if they have severe ed it's not enough but most guys like mid-range on the spectrum down um game changer and especially if you don't really have ed but you're just not 19 years old again you can kind of feel that change man you're back it's crazy your wife's going to call us up and complain <laughs> we've legitimately had that happen before um soft magnesium yeah etc all the, the full spectrum man keep all the the electrolytes in your body that you can um you know i we go through in our house we go through a boatload of gatorade zero it's a good source um but we have literally like two or three big twist containers of himalayan pink sea salt and i use that all the time so all right yeah, guys, again, if you if you don't mind, we're trying to spread the word on some of this stuff. Again, there's so much crazy misinformation. So do us a favor and give us a few likes if you don't mind. Give us a share or two. Um, that'd be great. So what kind of CJC? We, we use CJC 1295, and um, it's actually compounded in the same vial with the ipamorlin. So when you rehydrate the vial, it's all in there at the exact appropriate dose. So our monthly dose... It's 15 milligrams of the semoralin, which, or excuse me, ipamorlin, which is roughly like 420 micrograms a day, which is a great dose. And it's compounded along with six milligrams of the CJC as well. And so um, a good clinic to get blood testing done. We're the cheapest. You know, we don't make money on labs. You can go to Low T Nation and reach out to us. If we can't, you know, we only work in seven states. If we can't help you, we're, we have relationships with... Uh, fantastic clinics in all 50 states and I, I i'm not trying to direct traffic to us with that statement but i know we will give you the best deal and there's no obligation there's no strings attached with our lab testing um, i'm also in the process of putting out know, you guys will this is kind of a sneak peek but we are um, launching a company called budget blood work it'll be out in two to three weeks and it is literally accessible blood work to the average person for pennies on the dollar what you would pay retail at LabCorp. i'm so happy and so proud to be able to bring this to you guys um, it's going to be phenomenal so if you want to get a bunch of lab work you know look it's kind of illegal for your doctor to just go oh what are you curious about and, and you're using your insurance and he goes yeah let's look at this and this and this and this and this there must be medical necessity in order to justify the expense to the insurance company so that's why your doctor won't run these labs on you a lot of times that you're interested in because he doesn't feel there's medical necessity and so 
with us, it's cash. There's no medical necessity. There's no insurance requirements for anything. And our cash price is literally, literally going to be less than 10 cents on the dollar retail at LabCorp. So this is something we've been working on for two years. We've had to have a very special custom built um, account at LabCorp for them to allow us to do this in a telemedicine fashion, but it's going to be available to the entire country, all 50 states. And, um, it's amazing. And so we're going to have all the different packages based on autoimmune disorders or cardiovascular risk or whatever it might be for you guys. So, all right. IGF LR3 has made me, yeah, it can, you know, some of these growth hormone peptides, they are, they are mimics or analogs of something called ghrelin and ghrelin is a hunger hormone. If you guys have heard of MK677 or ibutamorin, it's a growth hormone. Um, GHRP6 that gets compounded with samorolin, it's a growth hormone. And if you take those, absolutely, it will elicit a tremendous hunger response. Um, sometimes that's bad if you're trying to lean out and lose weight. However, if you're trying to bulk or if you have like some kind of sarcopenic disorder, a muscle lacing disorder, um, it's the best thing ever, right? So it just depends on the situation. But when it's used in the wrong application, it's a nightmare because of those hunger hormones. And so... Celtic salt, yes sir, great stuff. Um, fixing to start 200 milligrams, split into two doses a week. It depends, you know, what your lab work looks like. Um, that's, a, that's a little too much for some. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patients on that dose also. So maybe, maybe not. Just watch your side effects, you know, once you get started. Um, and that'll help. How much tea for a woman to boost her libido? We start women at roughly 20 milligrams a week. And um, that gets them above like a 150. So we would keep our women somewhere between 150 and 250. There's some amazing research out recently that shows if you keep women above 150, testosterone, regardless of estrogen consumption, their breast cancer incidence re uh, cuts in half, which is, oh my God. Like if we can cut breast cancer incidence in half, right? One out of seven women get breast cancer. Um, it's one out of 14 at our clinic and we don't have any women getting it because we treat young women and we contraindicate on the breast cancer things. But, um, if you can do that, that's incredible, right? So keeping a woman between 150 and 250 is a good safe range. They don't, the virilization issues and the masculinization issues don't start until like 400, 450. They will get some hairs in certain places and some women will feel like a clitoral enlargement once they get up near that 250. Um, it increases sexual performance and you know sexual benefit but some people the you know just the actual visual of the increase they don't like it other women do love it so that'll be a very individual thing for for that woman and so all right let me see here what's wrong with my audio guys give me some feedback um is it too loud All right, is that better? Okay. Person. Carson Daly. I got that yesterday. <laughs> I got Forrest Gump a couple days ago. We get all kind of stuff. Do we help in Kentucky? We don't, but we do have an affiliate in Kentucky. So just send us an email um, to Low T Nation. There, you can go to our site and get it, and we'll introduce you to the same. Um, yeah, instant light -like growth factors, man. They are they are good. I will tell you this though, guys. You'll see some of these like LR3s with something called DAC. It's called the drug affinity complex. Don't take that. Um, there have been a couple studies in the last couple of years, and these are rat studies, but they would have IGF LR3 studies, and then have, you know, that was one group of rats, and they had another group that had the IGF LR3 with DAC. The drug affinity complex component, it increases the half life from just like a few hours to several days, right? So the, the burden that it puts on the pituitary is much greater. Well, in a couple of these studies, all of the rats died in the DAC group. So we don't, they don't know, I say we, like I was part of that, I wasn't a part of that, but um, they don't know why. And so for that reason, I had a bottle of, with IGF LR3 with DAC. Um, I threw it in the trash, I'm not touching that stuff. And so. All right, point three, point four, three times a week. Is that a large amount? One thing that I, I want you guys to start doing when you're talking about your doses, uh, point four is a volumetric measurement, right? It's not how much is in the point four. You can get you can get testosterone from 100 milligrams per ml, 150 milligrams, 200, even 250, all per ml, right? So the point four just says how much of that ml you're drawing up. 
So try to use the milligram. So basically 0.4, if that was of 100, you would say I'm taking 40 milligrams. And if you're taking 0.4 of 200 milligrams, you would say I'm taking 80 milligrams three times a week. That gives someone a much better idea of the dose because it's kind of like saying I'm taking one pill. Well, what's the pill, right? How much is in the pill? So keep that in mind. But 0.4, three times a week, I mean, even at the 200, that's not a crazy dose. You know, if that's, that's even if it's the high level, if that's at a 100 dose, it's by no means whatsoever a big dose. So you're doing good. Randy Libby, what's up, sir? I'm doing great today, man. Happy Sunday. Blood work is blood work. <clears throat> Been needing to run my, absolute Blood work tells all, y'all. It really, really does. If you're curious about something going on, um, don't start taking medication first, you know, just get your labs tested, right? I mean, you might find something in there that explains it. You might find the smoking gun. You might realize, shit, I don't need testosterone at all. And I was about to load up on that stuff. Um, it, you know, let the blood work kind of steer you and also truly understanding your symptoms, but the blood work, it will keep you from making a mistake with something, um, that you're doing. And so awesome. David, we'll be in touch with you, buddy. Appreciate you. Our monthly cost, we are a little bit expensive. We are $2.99, but we give you a lot more than most other clinics. You get, obviously, the testosterone. We give every single patient that gets testosterone something called enplomapine citrate. It's not Clomid. It's Clomid's little brother. It's got a much shorter half-life, but it protects your testicular function while you're on testosterone. It doesn't do that tremendously. HCG was a better product, but HCG has been pulled from compounders, so we can't do that. Guys that need an astrazole, we're not the biggest fans of it, but some guys definitely need it. You get the anastrozole. We also give you unlimited consultations. We give you unlimited blood work. There's never enough charge for any of that. We ship everything to your house. You get a dedicated account manager. Um, <clears throat> and also we have military and first responder discounts as well to 10%. So if you're military or first responder or a teacher, you get it. It's $269. Otherwise, you get all of that and it's $299. Um, we'll remind you when it's time to go to the lab. We stay on top of everything for you. You never have to, to lift a finger to make it happen. And so, Women tend to be extra sensitive to tests so they respond well. Some do. Man, we get crazy results with our women. I mean, crazy, crazy results with our women. Um, I started this company as a men's health clinic because there were no resources for men to get this kind of help. And I had no interest in treating women at all. I was like, I don't want to treat women. They have people that can treat them but all these women saw the results that we were giving their husband and they were like kicking our doors down and I'm like all right come on in you know and I sent all my practitioners to get super well trained on the female side and we're so glad we did because when you can fix a couple together it just changes their whole life you know and you can look at our reviews on our site uh, or our google site I mean we've saved marriages at marriage after marriage after marriage because we'll put them both on there and they're like oh my god we're back they thought they were both assholes they just you know, just they lost their zeal, they lost their, you know, their, that appeal to life, you know, and they just, everybody to them was a jerk, including their spouse, and once they felt better about themselves, they felt better about the world, then they felt better about their spouse, so, I am not in the U.S., can I send my blood work? David, I wish we could, it's actually illegal for us to consult with patients outside the U.S., I totally wish we would, uh, we're actually looking at the potential of opening up some clinics in the U.K., because there is absolutely no help over there. So if you're over there, you know, give us six or eight months. It looks like we'll be opening up um, a couple of shops. But over here, I'm afraid our hands are tied. The doctor said your estrogen elevated 229.46. Hey, certified, I'm going to need you to clarify that a little bit. If your estrogen level is... 229, that's a high level. You're going to need some anastrozole with that for sure. And so, how long does it take FRAG 176 to work or see results? Um, all of these, all of these peptides, they are multipliers for what you do, right? We tell these guys all the time, if you take testosterone and you sit on the couch, you're going to feel better. You're just going to feel better, right? You're going to sleep better. Also, your brain's going to be more protected, your heart and your bones, everything's going to be more protected. If you take these peptides, and you don't do anything, you're not going to get anything from it, right? So multiplying anything by zero is zero, right? Multiplying something by a little bit, right? You, you're not going to get great results. But the more you put into it, right? High volume, high intensity, working out, you know, just crazy resistance training. Also high protein. Make sure your, your macros are on point. Make sure your calories are in a surplus. 
uh, manage stress, manage sleep, like do all the right stuff, then these peptides, can, they actually have a real chance to, to multiply something fantastic. And so it, you're going to get the results of each one of these peptides based on the work you do. In our experience, the peptide is giving guys the most um, result with the least amount of side effects. That's, that's key. Um, is the ipamorolin with the CJC1295. Look, guys, we get all, we get access to everything. You know, straight up growth, like whatever. Uh, running straight up growth, it is so problematic. Cortisol, prolactin, uh, blood sugar issues are rampant, right? This is why, you know, bodybuilders are pinning insulin once or twice a day now. Um, we don't recommend that, right? I, I don't see a risk reward when you can get like 60 to 70% of those same benefits from a high dose ipamorolin like we give. Um, none of the side effects. Cortisol is great. Prolactin is great. Blood sugar barely bumps, you know, but if you're lifting, that's not going to be a big deal. And um, it's just so much safer. And again, if you can give me 70% of the results of something at pennies, you know, as compared to dollars and no side effects, that's a no-brainer, you know. So you guys keep that in mind. Um, all right, what else? I just started, prescribed 200 milligrams. That's awesome. If you're taking 200 milligrams, guys, make sure you split it into two. Um, two shots a week. You do not want to be doing that once a week. I mean, you can. It's not going to hurt you. But think about this. Let's say that shot gets you to a thousand. Well, the cypionate and an anthate, they're roughly seven to eight day half lives. If on Monday you're at a thousand and you don't take your shot until next Monday, you're at five hundred before you take your shot next Monday, right? Seven day half life. So you've lost half of it in a week. That's a pretty big roller coaster, right? You don't want to be going from a thousand to five hundred every week. Where if you pin twice a week, it barely like the 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 peak to trough is like a couple hundred points max, and that's less than the average like 25 year old walking around. The average 25 year old, let's say he he walks around at a thousand. If he goes out and gets blasted all weekend and he's tired and doesn't get any sleep, I mean he'll be at 500 on Monday too. It's just that natural homeostatic um, balance, right? It puts a lot of stress on his body. It'll you know all your hormones depress. So we can keep guys more homeostatic and balanced with two shots a week than uh, most 25 year olds if they're not living life you know as smooth as possible so i fraction i agree with you they do mega dose of rats and that's one thing that's a great point um, when you're looking at like erythritol studies right there's been a new erythritol study with rats um, they gave got they gave these rats the equivalent of what it would would be like 55 diet cokes a day right and some of them got cancer well no shit right who's drinking 55 diet cokes a day like, let's give these rats the equivalent of two to three Diet Cokes a day and see. Uh, but that makes a good point. But still, all the rats died in the group, right? So there, there was something there. And the other component did it. They did it, you know. So I, I'm not saying we know anything about what that was, but it's just, I, it just scares me personally. So I don't know. But yeah, great point. All right. Rojas levels were 120. Now he's at 1100. I know you're feeling so much better. I love it. And so. All right, you've seen it up to 400 million. Yeah, those are uh, not legal U.S. labs, but you will you can 100% find that on the internet and a couple of places. That's for sure. All right, what if you have low T but you feel great? Um, in our medical opinion, you don't have low T. You have adequate testosterone. Low T is a is a condition associated with symptomatology and numbers right but the symptomatology must be there in order to justify the condition of low testosterone so you just have the low level averages of testosterone that are optimal for you which is great you know your, your body will tell you when you're low you know what i'm saying like the 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 indicators will come on on the dash for sure and so what ester he said ether but ester we are a cypionate most of the um compounding in the u.s we can get other other um esters but i prefer cypionate because it has a two-day half-life and it helps you manage your schedule right if you're going to do two shots a week or three shots a week it keeps you super steady on that you know so um i'm in italy but we'll go to uk yes sir we'll let you know and we will damn sure let you know that's something that we're working on there are no good resources in the uk for guys at all man it's it's terrible um so we will let you guys know average t of a 50 year old 100 to 300 no so this is 
I fight. So one of my jobs, guys, I'm an educator. I also own a company called Cash Based Clinics, and I teach doctors how to do this, right? I teach them how to implement HRT, weight loss, ED, and peptide therapies into their clinic. And this is one of the things that I fight them on. I'm like, there's no such thing as, there should be no such thing as what's the average 50-year-old level, right? Your level when you are optimal, let's say when you were 22, 23, that should be your level for the rest of your life. When you're 90, that's your optimal level. Now, the fact that our bodies are falling apart, and this is another thing, guys, keep this in mind. The average 30-year-old right now has one half of the testosterone that the average 30-year-old did 50 years ago. That's, a, that's again, that's not an opinion. That's not anecdotal from what we've seen. That's a, that's a tried and true, um, that's proven, right? So if the average 30-year-old now is 50% lower than, than you know, um, 50 years ago, like, is that normal now? Or should that before have been normal? And also, let's say the guy's at 1,000 when he's 30, and then he's at 500 when he's 50. Well, is this normal now? Or is this just an indication that we are falling apart, right? Our environment's falling apart. Our food sucks. The stress is crazy. These phones that we're on all the time are driving us down. We're all, we're all just in front of all these artificial lights constantly. Our bodies are falling apart. So the number that everybody else is at at a particular age is not normal right it might be the average but it's not normal right so we believe in optimal level so let's say most guys had a pretty good number when they were 21 22 um, that number for most guys is somewhere between 900 to 1200 and that's where we that's where we come from so if your granddad's nine, 90 years old um, we're gonna put him there he'll feel better he'll feel like he's alive again I promise you so um, another thing too is when we're talking about normal, if you go to Quest, the high water mark for testosterone is 1200, where if you go to LabCorp, now it's like 964. And on other local labs, I've seen it as low as 800. Well, how the hell can the same guy be 800 and normal here, right, at the high water mark, but 1200 and way too high here? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So the numbers are very, um, they matter, right? But they're just bumpers on the lane for us so we don't throw a gutter ball at too low or too high. And then we figure out exactly how to navigate that individual patient um, there. Is it okay to take TRT and HGH together? Absolutely. Um, but be careful with your growth hormone. If you're taking straight growth, be very careful and, you know, potentially consider a peptide. You're going to get equal results, you know, unless you're just crushing it in the gym. Um, and then, you know, it's going to cost you less and you're going to have less side effects. So, all right. It's another thing too, guys. So Christopher J 71 just said total test could range from 300 to 1200. Absolutely. Right. Another thing to keep in mind about these lower end ranges, right? They're the, the average of people taking these tests across the country. Well, think about this. Sick people take tests way, way, way more than healthy people. Right. And also guys that are in their 40s, their doctors don't test. They, they don't test testosterone for most guys in their 40s unless you're feeling bad. If you're feeling if you go to your doctor, you're like, man, I'm feeling depressed. I'm anxious. I'm exhausted. I got no libido. I don't want to have sex. He's like, all right, let's test your testosterone. So the people getting tested typically are sick and they have low T because they're talking about it where the guys that have much, much better numbers don't get tested and excuse these results, right? Because when you're only testing sick people, the quote unquote normal is normal for sick, not normal for normal because we're not testing the normal guys. I, you can tell I'm a little passionate about this. I, I can get on a rant, so I'll, I will digress for now. All right. What else? Samoylan did absolutely nothing for me to compare to growth hormone. Um, I touched on this a little bit earlier, Alan or Elaine. Um, you have, to, if you're going to take Samoylan or Ipamoralin, you have to take something to kick off that growth hormone production process, right? Samoralin and Ipamoralin are simply somatostatin blockers. They stop the process from stopping, but they don't start it. They don't initiate it, right? So when your body makes growth hormone, um, your liver turns the growth hormone into IGF-1. IGF-1 turns into somatostatin, and somatostatin shuts the door, right? So we can keep that door open if we stop the cycle right here. So taking some oil and by itself is not going to do the trick most of the time. So that's why typically at a good clinic, you'll get it compounded with something like GHRP2, GHRP6, uh, CJC, something along those lines. So 
0.5 every week of a 200. That's cool certified. Um, you'll feel a little more stable if you do like 0.25, you know, Monday, Thursday, but that's still great. And so, all right. Another thing at uh, Lazy, you brought up a good point. Was the blood work done in the morning? Who cares? I don't mean to be disrespectful to you, but like that, I hate when doctors go, yeah, we need two reads. They have to be before 9 a.m. I'm like, what if the guy feels like shit at two o'clock in the afternoon, right? Like, that's what I want to see. Like, sh like, show me your numbers when you feel bad. That way I know how to treat the way you feel. I'm not here to just move numbers around on spreadsheets, you know? That's not our marker of success. Our marker of success is do you feel better, you know? And if they feel better, then we're like, hey, we're getting there. That's awesome, you know? So we don't care about morning tests. I don't care at all, right? It's like, go when you're there the lowest, you know? I want to see what's going on with those. And so, how good is 768 uh, testosterone with the 138 free? Um, again, it depends on the way you feel, right? If you feel terrible, then that's a 1, right? If you feel great, that's a 10. But that, thir that 138 on our scale is a 13.8. We keep that number between 20 and 30. That's our primary metric that we, that we diagnose and prescribe by. So, based on that, you're about half of where we would have you. Um, so if you do feel bad, you've got a lot of room to move up for sure. And so levels are 77. Man, Bill, get on that testosterone, sir. I'm glad you're waiting on your first dose. Um, I'd love to hear that. You're going to feel like a different man. That, that number is not only it impacts your quality of life, it messes with your brain. It messes with your heart. It messes with your bones. Um, good on you, man, for, for getting that, that going. I love it. Um, what age should you get your blood work done? It's a great question. When you start feeling not great, you know. Now, I, I also like this. You know, this is a hard sell for a lot of people because it will take a little bit of money out of their pocket. But if you have a, if you're 22, 23, or let's say you're a 45 year old dude with a 22 or 23 year old um, son, get their levels checked, right? Because that's a good baseline. If they feel great and they're healthy and strong, get their baseline checked, and that way. They have something to compare to when the wheels start to wobble, right? When things kind of go sideways and they're like, man, could it be my testosterone? And let's say they come back and they're at a 650. Well, my, that, that number's great for some guys, right? The guy earlier, he said he was at a 370 and he felt great. Well, that number's great then. Um, but the 650 can be ambiguous because if at 22 years old, that guy was at a 1300, yeah, he's at half of what he needs. But at 22, if, when he felt great, if he was at a 700, um, it's not the testosterone. That's not what's going on. So that baseline can help as a reference point to really understand where you're at with some of these other um, issues down the road. My libido doesn't work. <laughs> it will when you get on this testosterone. Um, yeah. Testings to help. SIP causes H2 retention with me. Okay. Um, this so this is Elaine again. Um, good questions, man. I appreciate. I, I'm gonna call you Alan. I think it's Alan Juver. Um, Cipionate. I fight guys on this all the time. Cipionate does not cause water retention, right? Um, any more than any of the other esters do. What causes water retention is estrogen, right? If you guys think about PMS, uh, PMS is simply one thing in the female body, and that is a is a physiologic response to elevated estrogen levels. Hey, babe, will you make me a cup of coffee, please? Um, it's an elevated it's elevated estrogen, right? What happens? Their nipples get sensitive. Some women get emotional, but they retain water. It's their fat days. They don't add fat, right? They're retaining water. It's the estrogen, and so there's a lot of debate that says, well, pro it causes less um, estrogen retention. No, it doesn't. Serum levels, right? Serum levels of testosterone that are in your blood system, that, it, that integrates with an aromatase enzyme. Aromatase grabs it and it turns it into estrogen. Um, the ester doesn't matter. So some esters do this. They spike hard, right? If you're pinning prop like every day, you're getting super high levels of testosterone. Uh, possibly if you're running it hot where the you know if you're doing two shots a week with an anthate or cypionate it's very steady um, it's all about the estrogen conversion you know so um, we don't offer a tri test but we do have a that's not true Hollandale Pharmacy does have a probe sip 
Uh, you know, it's a probe sip. It's an 80-20 sipionate propionate blend. Um, but I don't even like that because it's just, you know, the propionate spikes, they don't do anything for you, right? Especially when you have a solid, steady baseline of working out. And this is where I kind of butt heads with bodybuilders because it's just old, installed, like, bro science. Like, it's just been in the industry forever. Like, oh, you want to hit harder, you know, the day after your workout. Well, your body is literally repairing itself from uh like hypertrophy occurs 48 hours after working out right that spike from propionate might last like 18 hours or something along those lines you know what i mean so you want high steady levels for the entire 48 hour window which means you got to be steady you know so um hope that helps all right how can i get started on trt and i'm 25 at our clinic, we don't take your age into consideration um, because we take every single patient's fertility into consideration. So every single patient of ours gets enclomaphene. So I don't care if you're 25 or 85, we're gonna take care of your testicular function regardless. Even if you don't need it, um, you do need it because there are downstream hormones like progesterone, pregnenolone, and DHEA. Those are significantly down-regulated when you take testosterone without anything. Um, and support and those hormones make guys feel better also but if you're 25 and you have actual symptoms of low testosterone right and your numbers are low we'll treat you and like all the time now we're going to do a couple additional fertility things we're going to recommend that you get a um a fertility test because also if you're 25 and your testosterone levels are very low your fertility levels may also be very low and you need to know that, especially if you're 25 and you're like, you know what, 35 is the new 30, I'm gonna wait till I'm 35. Well, if you have super low fertility levels at 25, you may not be able to wait till you're 35, right? So if we see those numbers are very low, we're gonna recommend um, you know, the consideration of something like a cryopreservation facility where you can go donate some and um, have it preserved so you will be able to, to have a baby in 10 years. So. Will six to eight months use of testosterone permanently shut down your production? Not typically. We have seen short-term use and some guys just completely knock their ability to make some off, but we also can't completely prove that because they may have just had terrible production before, right? So if you had levels before check and then you did testosterone, you had levels after check, um, typically six to eight months you're going to be fine you're going to rebound in a few months and you'll be okay you know i don't i'm not recommending that guys don't do that but you know for this guy's question um you'll probably be okay deer antler spray good for fertility i hate to admit this i hate to admit this deer antler velvet actually does increase growth hormone production thank you um not much on the fertility side though so i hate supplements most of them are just garbage bs just marketing crap um they work they work you know the deer antler spray works so lift heavy rest three days lift again i love it that works as long as everything else is working right some guys though their testicular function is just shot and they're you know the it's not bad advice to say hey man lift heavy sleep well you know hit your macros and your testosterone will go up yeah, unless their testicular function is compromised. And then it's frustrating, right? They're like, shit, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm doing my trainer saying, I'm doing my, like, you know, what's going on? Um, with our blood work, we can tell if your testicular function has the potential to increase. And that's by looking at LH and FSH. If they are low, that's the signal, right? That's the, the pedal on the car, if you will, for testosterone production. So if you're not pushing the pedal at all, right? Um, we, we, we have room to push the pedal. But if LH and FSH are up and like past the four, um, you've got the pedal to the metal. There's nothing you can do. Deadlift, squats, it doesn't matter. Um, your sleep's not gonna make a difference. That means the, the very last signal to the testicles to make testosterone is being um, engaged and your testicular function can't respond. That means the cellular function in those Leydig cells that makes testosterone, it can't respond and there's nothing you can do environmentally or socially or anything that's going to make a difference with that. So, um, Alan, just hit us up at lowtnation.com. Man, we'd be happy to help you out in any way. Um, is three IUs too much HGH to take? Man, it is for me. Like, this is where I... 
I do digress because a lot of guys get a lot of great side effects from that, but or excuse me, a lot of great benefit from that, but they get crazy side effects from it. It costs them a fortune, right? And I just don't see the risk reward, especially when you're talking cost effectiveness as well. So there's no way I would take it, you know, um, you know, but a lot of very, very healthy guys do. You know, like three IUs is a good amount. Keep an eye on your your cortisol levels. Keep an eye on your prolactin levels. Um, make sure your blood sugar is not, you know, getting out of hand. Keep an eye on your A1C and your fasting insulin to make sure you're not getting on that type two spectrum. And uh, you might be okay at that level, but not a we look, we have almost a thousand patients concurrently right now. Um, not one of them is on that much growth hormone, and our patients look like badasses i mean they're 60 year olds with six packs you know what i mean so it's not necessary if you're willing to do the right things and look the other thing too if you're not willing to do those right things you can take all the growth hormone in the world you're not going to get the six pack so focus on the behaviors and the activities and the lifestyle and the environment that would give you the six pack and focus less on that growth hormone so Blood test, 36, level was 44, now it's 847. Brandon, you probably saved your life, bro. Like, that's, that testosterone level of 44, like, that's, like, you would have got dementia or Alzheimer's or had a terrible heart or whatever. So, great job, congratulations. Um, Alan, currently on TRT, instead of Smorlin, look at Ipamorlin compounded with CJC1295. That is a home run peptide. It's the best thing we have going. Um, it's beautiful. Ipamorlin, Brent said, well, he stole my thunder. Brent says CJC1295 plus Ipamorlin plus test equals amazing. I agree. All right. Um, Anthony, missed your take on an astrozole. So, I don't love it. Um, however, a hard and fast rule at a clinic that says we don't use an astrozole, it, it kicks a bunch of their guys in the face because some guys aromatase at a much, much higher rate than others. I don't really care what a guy's estrogen level is, but I care about estrogenic symptomatology, right? Estrogenic side effects. So if a guy's like emotional, if he's retaining water, if his nipples are killing him, um, you gotta get that guy's estrogen level down. Now, if his testosterone level is sky high, we could turn the big dial. You know, testosterone is a big dial. And everything downstream is going to turn down. So we turn that down. But if his, if his testosterone level is just kind of fine, let's say he's at a 900, but his estrogen is at a 125, and he's having estrogenic issues, yeah, man, we're going to give that guy enough anastrozole to get his estrogen into a healthy level, right? I hate dive bombing estrogen. Estrogen is critical. Your heart needs it, the endothelia in your arterial walls need it, your brain needs it, your penis needs it, like your erection quality goes to nothing when you drop your uh, estrogen levels down. So anastrozole, it gets a really bad rap, but um, it's, it gets a bad rap because doctors over prescribe it. The commercially available dose is one milligram, right? Starting at one milligram, we get almost a thousand patients. We might have like 15, 20 guys at one milligram, maybe. And that's what a lot of guys do. They, hey, here's the 100 milligrams of test. I want you to take one or two of these anastrozole a week and the guy feels terrible. Well, he's blaming the anastrozole, but the anastrozole is just doing what it was asked to do. It's just, in, it's got to be done in a granular approach, right? You can't just jump in the deep end with this. You got to walk down the stairs. So, um, what's next? Low dose Clomid is calling. Yeah, Clomid is a nightmare, man. Um, we use enclomiphene for testicular um, support. It's, it's different. It's, Clomid is called clomiphene citrate. It's got a 7 to 10 day half-life depending on the manufacturer. Um, enclomiphene has about a 10 hour half-life. So it jumps on that estrogen receptor and it jumps off. But that little bit of time that it's on there, it stimulates testicular function. And that is what is going to take the atrophy out of play. Um, I don't like... Clomid, the only time that we give guys Clomid is if they're family planning, and we flat out tell these guys, I mean, like, hey, man, you're probably going to run into some symptoms, but don't complain about it because your wife is about to carry another human being inside her for 40 weeks, so it doesn't really equate, right? So, um, all right, needed for some men, but can be dangerous. I'm not sure what we were talking about there. Is low T considered medical so I can write it off on my IRS? I don't, you can't write it off as a tax um, thing. However, if you have an HSA or an FSA, 
you know, a lot of companies like mine can take that for sure. Um, but I mean, it's not going to be a tax write off, I'm afraid. Do we prescribe HCG with TRT instead of Clomid? We used to. I love HCG, it's fantastic. We actually do prescribe it from commercial pharmacies for some of our guys that want to go and pay for it. It's expensive. Um, but if our guys want to go and pay the additional expense, we're happy to write that prescription. No pharmacy or no, con no, excuse me, no TRT clinic like mine in the country can get it from compounding pharmacies anymore. So two things happen. We either have to write the prescription and you go to CVS or Walgreens or, you know, Publix or whatever and get it, or we can buy it wholesale, which is really expensive, and then we can resell it to you. Um, the, that's just not cost effective because the n clomiphene it works very well. It's just not quite as good as HCG. So HCG is still on the market commercially it's just not on the market at all from a compounding pharmacy anymore how do you <laughs> all right can too high testosterone combined with low estrogen cause fatigue and other issues it's not the high testosterone it's the low estrogen right um, high testosterone doesn't make anybody feel bad it's the downstream effect that can be too much estrogen or too much DHT. Those can cause issues. And also low estrogen from typically taking too much uh, of an AI, an, an aromatase inhibitor, can cause that problem as well. And so that's got to be addressed. So if you're taking, if your estrogen is low and you're taking an, an AI, stop the AI. And we also have several guys that we literally write an estrogen cream for. So they get their testosterone, they do their two shots a week, and they do an estrogen cream every day because for whatever reason, their body just makes no estrogen. Okay, so you got to keep those estrogen levels high. Um, 56 and competed for over 10 years. I stopped using gear for a year, and I feel it. Yeah, you know, if you, um, if you ran gear for 10 straight years, you, your testicular function is probably shot. Your testosterone levels are probably in the tank. We deal with a ton of guys, Tim, that, that are in the exact same boat. And we just put them on a, a good, therapeutic, healthy dose of testosterone. And they're like, oh, I'm back. And a healthy dose, right? So you don't want to be at these crazy high levels. You also don't want to be at these crazy low levels. And there's the potential, you know, we'd have to look at your blood work, that you are um, at that low level because your body just can't make anymore. So, all right. Is it abnormal to have 400 SHBG? Yeah, man. Well, okay, so it depends on the um, the lab that you're on. So 400 total with an SHBG of 11, your, your, your free T was probably like mid-20s or something like that, low 20s. That's a great number, man. As long as you keep that free T between 20 and 30, most guys feel amazing. That's it. So, um, you know, take a... Uh, Take that for what it's worth. So, hey guys, one more thing. If you guys don't mind, it's been a few minutes since I asked this. Give us some love with the likes if you don't mind. I'm trying to get this information out there and share this. Um, we're going to start doing lives at least every other day, a lot of times daily. And there, we're going to have topic, very specific topics like ED, one day, peptides, one day, like some more, or excuse me, um, uh, semaglutide, weight loss, one day, whatever it might be. So I want people to have access to this. So I appreciate it so much. Is short-term, low-dose enclomiphene or clomid better for fertility? I hate to say it, clomid's better, right? Because it's just, it's full bore. Um, the enclomiphene kind of tiptoes in and tiptoes out, where clomid's like the Kool-Aid man. It just jumps through the wall and it stays there, right? So uh, we recommend it. You know, we tell guys, just suck up the side effects. Because um, nothing's more important than trying to have a kid, right? If that's where you're at in life and you want to do it, then it's, it's worth the side effects when it's, when it's over. Um, just deal with the clomid. And something like 25 milligrams every other day is a good dose. Rarely do guys need to go above that when it comes to clomid. And so, odd bud, um, your level is at 232. That's why you're odd bud. I'm just kidding. That's not nice. Um, good for you, though, man. I'm happy for you. That'll you'll you'll feel so much better. Um, should I consider TRT with 319 and low estradiol? You should sit, Devin. You should consider TRT if you feel like you have low T. Um, the primary indicators for test for low testosterone are symptomatic, um, more so than the numbers, right? So that 319, yeah, it's a pretty good indicator. Obviously, that your levels aren't where they need to be, but um, it's enough for some. So if you're at that level and you feel bad, like energy levels, fatigue, 
motivation, confidence, those kind of things. And also physiologically, like you're losing muscle, you're gaining fat, you got no libido, erection quality is not great, then 100% yes. Um, Brandon's symptoms. The doc doesn't seem to be an expert on TRT. Is there any specific blood test I should be asking for? That is a fucking great question. Um, LH, FSH. Those are the signals, right? So if those are high, I don't even care what your testosterone levels are. Um, chances are they're not high enough because your body's literally going, give me more, right? So LH and FSH, those gonadotropics you want to look at. Free and total testosterone, estradiol, and PSA. Make sure your prostate's healthy. And so um, those will make a really, even a bad doctor can look at those and go, oh, okay, yeah, I guess you do need testosterone. Because again, if LH and FSH are above a four, it's inarguable, right? Your body's begging. It's begging for more. So in the, with the exception of a pituitary adenoma, that's 100% of the time a low T situation, regardless of what your T is, right? All right, my, let me see. Kidney disease, stage two, can I use TRT? Yes, you can. Um, be careful lifting, working out hard, right? What may you want to make sure that you don't put a tremendous load on your body with like the creatine phosphokinase fallout that can happen from, you know, like tough CrossFit workouts or like, you know, if you go do like a, a Spartan race or something. So be careful with that. But just the testosterone itself is not going to hurt you at all. My levels came back at 281 and 29. Seeing the doc again on Wednesday. Awesome. You don't need to be a doctor to prescribe this. You need to be a prescriber to prescribe this um, legally. You got to be a nurse practitioner, a PA, or a MD because testosterone is a controlled substance, and you need a DEA license in order to um, to prescribe it. And so, should I be taking the drug for testicular shrinkage? Is it necessary? Good question. That's the last thing I'm worried about. I'm not worried about shrinkage. Um, the smaller your balls are, the bigger your junk looks, right? It's not that big of a deal. However, um, and so many guys come to us, guys, they're like, I'm 36, I've got a kid, I'm not, I don't worry, I'm not worried about my fertility at all. And we're like, we don't care. We're worried about your fertility because all my practitioners, they took an oath, an oath to do no harm. And that's something that we take very, very seriously, right? Number one. Number two, the downstream hormones like progesterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, those make a profound impact on the way a lot of guys feel, okay? That's number two. And life changes. I mean, so many guys come to us and they're like now 42 and they're the guy that said, man, when I was 35, I didn't think I needed to take care of my testicular function anymore. I had a kid, I was married, but then they got divorced and they meet a new girl and she wants a kid and now they're in trouble. So we see these all the time. So guys will come at us with like their perspective. I don't want a kid. I don't need this. And I'm like, take it from a clinic that has the perspective of having treated thousands and thousands of guys over the years. Um, just take it, man. Just, there's no reason in killing your testicular function because someday you might have to rely on it, right? And if you do, you're going to regret it when it's not there. And also you may need the fertility down the road. Like if you're, the, the argument can be made, if, you, if, if you're 70 years old jumping on our program and you have no testicular function whatsoever, that's a valid argument, right? We might not worry about that. However, you know, if you're a 40-year-old dude, we're going to give it to you. So, yeah, take the entomophene, um, use it full time. I hate the idea of a PCT, like a post-cycle therapy, because you should be on testicular um, support while you're on testosterone, not after, right? You know, that means the damage is done. Not necessarily long-term damage, but the shutdown has already occurred. So, hope that helps. I am not a doctor, Chris Clark. I am a an educator in the space. I teach doctors how to do this, but I can't prescribe to anyone. Um, I just I pick this up in a different manner. Um, so I have doctors and nurse practitioners that work in my clinic that are patient facing. They're absolute ninjas at this. Um, I'm so proud of the technical expertise that we have in this, but it's not me that's patient facing in my clinics at all. Um, oh, am I licensed in Florida? We are as a clinic, not me. Uh, if you're working, if you're uh, in Florida, we can definitely work with you. So just hit us up on the website. We're happy to do. Okay, Billy, this is a great question. I want to talk about this. Um, this is something that everybody needs to hear. What dosage of an astrozole do you recommend and how often my estradiol is in the 50s? The question is, 
do you have estrogenic issues, right? Nipple sensitivity, emotional instability, that just doesn't seem normal, right? Some guys have been a little anxious or a little, you know, emotionally in, uh, instable. Forever, the, the testosterone is not the, the culprit if that's not new, right? But if you get on testosterone, your estrogen goes up, um, what do we do, right? Like, um, maybe nothing, right? I can keep my estradiol at 100 and I feel great. I, I can't tell it, right? Um, we used to have guys that worked for us. They could get theirs in the 50s and they felt terrible, like emotional. They'd even turn red a little bit. Um, so treat the symptoms, not the numbers, right? So if you're out of 50s and um, and you, you're having the symptoms, go low, man. Start with like a 0.1 twice a week, maybe a 0.3 once a week or something like that and see how you feel on that. But treat the symptoms when it comes to estrogen. Never, ever treat the numbers, man. Don't treat the numbers. I thought pushing these solutions was illegal. Nope. Hope not. I'm going to jail if that's the case because I've been doing this for a long time. Any issues with taking semaglutide and TRT and epimoralin? No, no, and no. Um, just be careful in this sense. So epimoralin, you're taking that to put on muscle. Okay. Now, these have a very synergistic thing. If the semaglutide dose is too high and you're not eating enough and you're not getting enough protein, um, and if you're not resistance training, don't waste your money on the epimoralin, right? But if you're resistance training and you're keeping your protein high enough and you're just using the semaglutide to stop binging and to stop overeating tremendously, the epimoralin will help tremendously with the catabolic effect of that long-term deficit, right? So everybody knows when we lose fat, we also lose muscle typically. Um, TRT and epimoralin together can really mitigate and reduce that muscle loss big time. So yeah, absolute fantastic synergistic effect with semaglutide, TRT, and epimoralin. Can you use HCG if recently expired? Um, if it's dry still, if it has not been hydrated, it stuff never goes bad. HCG is only good for like 60 days once you hydrate it. So at that point, if it's expired, throw it away. Do I have bourbon in the vase? Yes, sir. That is whistle pig, and I love it. Concerned about traveling out of the country on TRT? It is a concern. Um, one thing that helps, keep your prescription. If you have a prescription, keep it in what we call an insulin cooler. There are these little things that you can travel with. Um, they're meant for diabetics to travel with their medication. So if you think about all the diabetics in the world, I mean, there's there's millions and millions and millions of them. People that work in these airports across the world, they're used to seeing those insulin coolers with vials and needles in there. So that's your best bet. Now in the US, the TSA can't touch your stuff whatsoever, even if you don't have a prescription. But we have had patients traveling the world have their stuff confiscated. Um, but once we told them to start using those little insulin coolers, they're like 10 bucks on Amazon, um, and keep their prescription in the actual container, no one's ever got it stolen. So great question. What state are we in? We're in Georgia. We're licensed in North Carolina, Virginia, Florida, Alabama, Texas, and soon to be California. We're waiting on California. All right. Don't want to have to stick myself on vacation, but don't want test levels to drop. I mean, one thing you can do, just we, we use 27 gauge half inch insulin needles, right? Tiny little needles. Let me show you. Um, well, these are 30s, but it's the same. These are the needles that we use for testosterone, right? A 27 gauge, because we're only drawing up half of a cc at a time, it draws it up in like 30 seconds, no big deal. Um, if you're going to travel, you can preload a couple of these and you'll be good to go. Just, you know, hit yourself when you want. That way you don't have to manage your entire stash and all your vials and this and that. That's what I typically do. So, All right. So, Bert, um, are the injections the only option? What about pills or lotions? No, there's a lot of options. There's patches, creams, gels. Um, pellets, but from a physiologic, like homeostatic perspective, all of those things do this constantly, right? Up and down, you're all over the place. Pellets go up and down for like three or four months. Gels are out of your body in like 16 hours every day, so you're missing like eight hours of actual testosterone levels. Um, you're, you're, if you're doing two shots a week, you're just really static when it comes to the injections. 
but if you just flat out can't inject yourself and that's a legitimate thing a lot of guys can't in that case then um, look at a cream now you don't want to look at commercially available creams like axeron or androgel because those are so lowly dosed they're dosed terribly um, use a compounded cream because your doctor can put as much in that cream as he needs to do to get your levels to an optimal level right and those they the commercially available gels um, are outrageously expensive too so captain crunch your doctor sucks man no offense but 248 and he says fix your diet you i mean you, you need a lot more information than that he needs to know if your lh and fsh will even allow um, for you know increased production there's a lot of things to it and also look at all the 25 year olds eating pizza and drinking beer all weekend and walking out around at a thousand diet has less impact than you think on this to be honest so face-to-face -face consult required for treatment no sir we are a telemedicine clinic and uh, we rarely do face-to-face -face. in fact right now we don't even have an office because we are moving offices and um but we rarely ever, ever see patients in our clinic. Most patients prefer the Zoom or, you know, just a phone call. And uh, if someone does insist on putting a face with a name, that's fantastic. We're happy to see them. But most people don't want to uh, waste their time driving across town and waiting around just to see somebody. So, all right. So, Ty Hallmark, um, we use for long-term support, we use enclomiphene. You can also use HCG if you get it from a pharmacy. And for short-term fertility considerations, Clomid is going to be the best. It's going to give you that, that ramp up of, you know, as much um, sperm and semen production as you can possibly get. So, Alan, kiss peptin. Um, it is. It's not great. Also, gonadarellin. We, we prescribe gonadarellin to guys that can't really tolerate the enclomiphene. There's a small percentage of guys, but it just doesn't work right. The half-life for kispeptin and gonadarellin is about five minutes. Um, it's not a lot of time for it to do what it needs to do. And another thing, you'll see the studies that show that it actually works. Read the abstract of those studies. They're using insulin pumps to pump it multiple times a day. And so that's not... There's no room for that in a real life application. So we're trying to get away. We don't use Kispeptin at all anymore. And we're trying to get away from gonadarellin with some other options as well. And so, so HCG. And so if my dad has low T, will I have a higher chance of it? I don't think so. There's not a lot of research that supports that. Although anecdotally, we have a lot of father son combos, you know, but that's anecdotal so there's no real research that shows there's any kind of heavy genetic prevalence um, with when it comes to low T so the samoylin help with fat loss mixed with H it absolutely does ipamorlin compounded with CJC 1295 is by far the best though it kicks samoylin's ass um, samoylin has a 20 minute half-life where ipamorlin has a four-hour effective life so you're going to get much much more now some people will say well samorlin's stronger it does increase the amplitude a little bit more but that's like me saying hey would you like a dollar a minute for 20 minutes or 75 cents a minute for four hours right you're going to get a lot more money with the four-hour option so um, don't use samorlin and also if you do use samorlin make sure it's compounded with something to kick off that growth hormone process like ghrp2 or GHRP6 because samorlin or ipamorlin by themselves does not kick off the process of growth hormone production. Um, just me, 46, I work out, however, stomach and back fat don't go away. It's two things, man, it's either hormones or calories, right? So um, the hormones, you can get it tested. Let's see what's up with that. And at the end of the day, if your hormones are fine, um, it's just calories, you know, I hate to simplify it that much, but at the end of the day, it kind of does come down to that. So I take a test to fight Zuck. <laughs> um, if in the USC, if they offer it, yeah, you're going to have to. We are located in the Marietta Square, Evan. Um, I love it. BioT, Mikey Miller. I am not a fan of the pellets for men we do the pellets for women I've, both of my nurse practitioners are bio trained um, practitioners but 
those things, they get you sky high and they get you low again, right? They, they go up and up and up and they go down and down and down. There's a lot of pharmacokinetic studies that prove this, right? It's not just anecdotal. Um, going up, what happens is, like, let's say this is your sweet spot. Well, you get up here and now you're making too much estrogen. You're making too, too much DHT. You're, you're symptomatic, like you're retaining water. Your nipples hurt. You're getting acne. Your hair's falling out. And then you can't treat the estrogen and DHT levels really because they're always increasing and then they're always decreasing. So if you try to treat them, um, how do you titrate up the medicine and titrate down the medicine to treat it, right? So that's problematic. And also you got to crash every four to five months and then start over again and you got to get the insertion. And guys, for men, it's, they, they cut a hole in your butt cheek and they, they take a three inch tube and they go this way, this way, and this way, and they drop three or four pellets in each one of those channels. Um, and you can't work out for like a week after that. So I'm just not a fan of them. We like them for women because it's one little channel. You pop one pellet in there. It's not that big a deal. And because it's one pellet instead of like 12 to 20, uh, their levels don't go all over the place crazy. But for guys, I promise you, we get guys on pellets all the time that hate it and they're like what the hell have i done to myself and we just monitor them until they're back down to a level that we can treat and then we put them on a flat line and they just feel better every day and they don't have to deal with all those issues um behaving yes issue that this stuff sits in does not make any difference whatsoever on absorption so don't worry about it pellets don't peak in valley man i teach doctors this I've taught hundreds of doctors this. I see that you're an FMP. There are pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic studies that prove this. I mean, the manufacturers want to say, oh, we baseline across. And they give you very specific intervals to test women and men that are on the way up, right? If you test a month later each time, you're going to see a much different result. So, um, Chris, um, my, my email is brandon at lowtnation.com. Um, send me an email. I'm happy to send you these results all these studies and it's it's it'll make sense promise you test levels are 117 yeah man aaron get help somewhere you know we're happy to help if we can but those levels are too low like it's affecting your quality of life so um let us know if we can do anything for you so all right this guy's trying to sell his stuff on my channel we gotta block that all right is it advisable to supplement testosterone with elevated PSA levels? Um, only after we do that, but after we get sign off from a actual uh, urologist. And there's some amazing new research out. There's a guy named Abraham Morgenthaler. He's a Harvard trained badass. Um, there are they are treating um, prostate cancer now with super super high levels of testosterone. Now that's oncology. We obviously can't do that. We never would do that. But there it is, the efficacy is now there, right? But, um, and also it's a proven point too. If your testosterone level is above 300, the, your, the prostate tumor cells, the androgen receptors in those cells are completely saturated, right? So you can't accelerate it anymore. However, there are standards, right? And we have to follow those standards. So if the PSA is above a four, we refer that patient to urology. Once the urologist says, hey, you can treat him, then we can treat him, so. Been on TRT for 90 days. I've seen muscle gains, but no weight loss. Um, well, if you've gained muscle and you haven't lost weight, that means you've lost fat, right? And we see this all the time. Some guys in their first couple months, they'll put on eight or 10 pounds of muscle, just getting back to that homeostatic muscle set point. Um, and they're like, if, as long as the, if you can do that and not, you know, move on the scale, you're losing the same amount of weight. So, all right. Let me see here. Okay. Been on TRT 13 years. Um, never taken Clomid. Would it work now? Probably not, man, to be honest. Um, that's a long time to be on TRT. Don't use Clomid, though. If you're going to try something, use ACG or n -clomiphene. Clomiphene citrate and n -clomiphene citrate are not the same thing. Um, so keep that in mind. All right. We are located in Georgia. Rad 140. Man, those SARMs guys are absolute garbage. I mean, just like 
like every good expert that I know on this stuff, they just take the biggest dumps on this and they still are kind of mainstream. Um, watch Derek with more plates, more dates. Like watch all the guys that know what they're talking about when it comes to these SARMs. Don't take these things, man. They stay in your system for a long time. A lot of them aromatase. They shut down. We get guys all the time. They're like 22, 23, and their total testosterone will be a 70 because they've been running these SARMs. So I don't love these. Um, they're just not my, my favorite. So LH and FSH are 0.3. Is that bad? Um, I'm assuming you're on testosterone, and that's kind of normal for guys that are on testosterone for sure. Um, that's why we give those little pulses twice a week of emplomaphene. It drives those numbers up for short term, right, for like 12 hours, but that gives that testicular function stimulation a couple times a week, and that's enough stimulation to stave off the uh, testicular uh, atrophy. So, thoughts on giving blood when your hematocrit is higher? That's what you do when it's high. And so, you know, the hematocrit number is like the percentage of total red blood volume that's comprised of the red blood cells. Every time you give a pint of blood, you drop that by three points. Okay, so if you have to do it once in a blue moon, that's great. Go to Red Cross. Every time you give blood, you might save somebody's life anyway. Um, every time you give blood, it literally starts a cycle that recycles almost all of your blood in your body. So that's healthy too. You got to watch doing it too much though because you can dump your iron stores and your ferritin stores. So if you do it often, keep an eye on your, your ferritin and iron levels. There's a lab test called the Total Iron Binding Capacity. It's a TIBC. Take a look at that um, if you're doing it a lot. So... Should I supplement with high PSA levels? Talk to your urologist. Many urologists now, they understand the actual preventative aspects of testosterone when it comes to prostate. If you have an old school urologist, he's going to say, hell no. If your urologist is like 35 years old, he's going to put you on testosterone with a high PSA a lot of times. So it's just going to depend on your, your guy. So um, I'm on TRT. Is there something that I should go along with to maximize your results? I love this question. Man, that's, that's a sign of accountability. That's a sign of a guy that's going to get it done. I like to say it like this, man. What we can do to somebody like my age or somebody that, you know, that's in their 40s or 50s is I can restore your, your hormone levels to that of, I don't know, like a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old, right, 18-year-old. But the issue is that in the U.S., we have an obesity epidemic with our teenagers because they're not doing the right stuff. So I can give you the hormones to make you the fat teenager that sits on the couch, you know, just playing Xbox all day. Um, or I can give you the hormones of somebody that gets out there and, and puts the work in and gets all the amazing results. So resistance training, manage your macros, manage your sleep, manage your stress, manage your hydration. Um, I know those sounds so fundamental, like no shit, but literally that's what's missing in most guys. If you want to take this testosterone and consider it like an easy button and be like, oh, I'll take the test and get a six pack. You won't, it won't work like that, right? Look at all the 18 year olds that are fat. Um, but if you're willing to put in the work, man, the testosterone will do it. So again, resistance train, high volume, high intensity, lots of protein. Make sure you're in a little bit of a surplus if you're trying to gain muscle and a little bit of a deficit. If you're trying to lose muscle, manage your sleep and stress and manage your hydration and you will kick ass. So, um, Nicholas, my doc put me on Clomid to naturally increase my T levels. That does work. It typically doesn't make guys feel better. Um, and if it doesn't, then you want to look at TRT. And that only works if your LH and FSH are on the lower side, right? If they're on the higher side, it's already the pedal to the metal. And pushing the pedal harder when it's already to the metal doesn't do any well. So I'm glad it seems to be working, though. That's awesome. That's an indication that it might you might have had that room. Is it ideal to take HCG with every testosterone shot? HCG is best used twice a week because of the half-life duration like a Monday, Thursday administration of HCG, somewhere about 400 to 500 IUs. Each shot is going to keep your testicular function the healthiest. healthiest. 6.5 in clomiphene. Yeah, zinc, Tongat Ali. It's not the uh, Tongat Ali. It's the clomiphene. It took you from 330 to 650. I love that. That's awesome. In fact, with our young guys, if they come in and their LH and FSH are very low, we don't put them on testosterone. We put them on enclomapine by itself 
for exactly what S. Ortiz said um, some guys, younger guys, can get a real boost off the enclomiphene by itself. So that's awesome. Um, hematocrit's already high. Yeah, man, this can definitely make it worse. If it's already high, um, you might need to talk to a hematologist. You might be on the scale of a, of a disorder called hemochromatosis, in which case you'll need regular blood dumps, right? So, um, but also, don't avoid testosterone for one thing that can be very easily managed because you might open the door to introduction to other things that are not so easily managed, like obesity, right? Um, the mental health impact that low T has on a lot of guys is tremendous. Um, so the, the hematocrit is one of the easiest things to manage just with routine blood draws. So don't, if you feel like you need the testosterone, explore it with a good clinic that knows how to manage that the right way. The best testosterone, in my opinion, as far as application goes, is the Cipionate shots twice a week. And so, all right, I got high liver enzymes. What do I do? That's a tricky question. That can be from a million things. Uh, if you have fatty liver and your enzymes are high, there's a very simple, cheap, and easy solution. It's choline and inositol. It's a, cheap, it's a supplement you can get together in the same pill. Take that daily for six weeks and retest. Um, if it's still messed up, go see an expert, man. You might have a, a liver issue you want to get, um, you want to get handled. Jesse Carolina, um, what do I think about MK677? It is awesome when applied the right way. Um, it's a big deal to make sure that, that if you have any kind of disordered eater, eating pattern, don't ever get near that stuff because it'll make you so hungry. You're going to eat everything in sight. Um, if you're trying to lose weight, it's a terrible peptide, right? But if you're trying to bulk and you're trying to eat 4,000 calories and get 250 grams of protein and you're just stalling out at 3,000, this will really help you. And also, if you know anybody that has any kind of muscle wasting or sarcopenic disorder um, where they just can't eat enough to keep body mass on, this is a godsend. It can literally extend their life and extend the quality of life by maintaining strength. Um, so, you know, the, the other name for this stuff is called ibutamorin. When applied correctly, it's fantastic. Love it. Thoughts on CJC 1295? It's our favorite. You compound it also with epimorlin. Together, they very synergistically work in kicking off growth hormone production and also maintaining the production for about four hours. If you use either one of them alone, you get almost nothing, right? So the CJC will kick it off, but then it shuts down fast. And also, if you take epimorlin by itself, it may never, the, the, the growth hormone production may never get kicked on. So who do I need to speak to my, so I need to speak to my doctor about getting on what Clomid. If your family planning, talk to them about it, right? Um, just it's clomiphene citrate, typically like 25 milligrams every other day is going to get you where you need to be. So, um, yeah, we talked about the hematocrit, da 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 da, and clomiphene, 12.5 every other day. Um, either way works, man. As long as you're pulsing those testicles every few days, you're going to keep that atrophy away. You know, we use it just kind of like in the, there's some really good research recently that shows if you just put, if, if someone's in a coma and you put tens units on their legs, like 15 minutes twice a week, you'll reduce their atrophy by 80%, right? So you don't need a lot of stimulation and you don't need these long windows of stimulation. You just got to use that tissue a little bit and it'll preserve it. And so that's kind of what we're doing with the enclomiphene. They're just bursts of stimulation to that testicular tissue to mitigate the atrophy. And so, lost 20 pounds of muscle due to a shoulder injury. What's a good way to gain it back? Man, slow and steady, you know, old fashioned, just, you know, push pull legs, lots of calories, lots of protein, make sure your hormones are good. Please give blood. Listen to this man, he knows what he's talking about. Giving blood truly saves lives, guys. So, also, guys, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask one more time. Give us some love with the likes and the shares. I'm trying to get all this good information out there. Um, I really appreciate it. And so I heard I should take a baby aspirin every day. Even the U.S. Heart Association has um, disavowed itself with that advice. It's no longer um, advice. A lot of cardiologists still say it, but it doesn't do much at all. And so that's the fourth time I've gotten Carson Daly on this live. I'll take it. All right. 
Phlebotomy is the only option to consistently lower the red blood cells um, if you're on TRT. I mean, you can lower your testosterone level, but again, optimal is optimal, right? We want to keep your testosterone level optimally, and if there are some downstream issues, we want to manage them individually. So keep that in mind. Do I take estrogen? No, I do not. Um, I carry a lot of estrogen, though. I, my estrogen level stays like 90 plus most of the time. I convert it at a high level, but I tolerate it. So if I tolerate it, I'm not going to mess with it. So where do you start to get treatments? Well, for a patient that is interested in us, they just call us. Uh, we send them to the lab, any lab core in their area, and lab core sends us the results. We're also going to send an intake form at the same time to the patient. So when we get those lab results and the intake form back, we do the consultation. If they're a good fit, we just ship the medication and we follow up on regular intervals. We follow up at eight weeks, we send you back to the lab. If everything looks great, we follow up every six months. And so um, that's kind of how we do that. Primary physician, man, if you're lucky, some are, some are good at this, right? I've trained dozens and dozens. I've trained hundreds of nurse practitioners that work at TRT clinics. And um, you're gonna get, on average, average you're going to get much much better love and care and expertise out of trt clinic but there are some uh, really good primary care guys that have come to training you know that that know this stuff best treatments for atrophy are um, acg enthalamine and clomid so uncle is 64 can he get to 19 20 year old levels safely 100 percent and like there's no risk in taking an older person back to a level that they were optimal at for you know earlier in their life there's that's just um that's one thing doctors are they're like well this is normal for his age yeah because he's falling apart this statement i wish i'd come up with this but there's a guy named dr rand that's also on youtube and does some of these things he coined this phrase um, he says if your hormones are age appropriate that just means you're dying at the expected rate right you're falling apart at the same rate everybody else is so like F that. Like, we're not here to, to participate in that. We're actually here to completely mitigate that and reverse that. So um, age appropriate is not appropriate, if that makes sense. I'm 23. I have no problems, but I want to get on testosterone for the benefits. I see no reason not to. Well, I do. Don't do it. Man, just focus on the lifestyle. You're 23, man. You probably have the androgen support to build muscle, get lean, get ripped. Uh, you don't need this and the, look, the moment you start taking this stuff you do introduce potential issues right now when you're 30 and you've got low t those potential issues are grossly outweighed by the benefits of the testosterone the positive benefits but you have the positive benefits now right work out and get your get get right in the gym you know get your protein up get your calories up and um, get that discipline worked on that'll be uh, that'll be what you want so all right, when you're on TRT, LH and FSH are 0.3, what should I take? Everybody who takes testosterone, their LH and FSH drop. That's because those are the signals that your body sends your testicles to say, hey, I need more testosterone. Well, when we're injecting the testosterone or you're getting it from anywhere, your body's like, shit, I, got five. I'm, I don't need anymore. So it turns that signal off. Now, if you were taking enclomiphene twice a week, if you take the enclomiphene and you go to the lab like two hours later, those 0.3s will be like a 1, right? You'll see that it pulses up and it's going to go back down. If you're on Clomid, and most guys apply to this, not all. If you're on Clomid, which is in your system 24-7, it's not a pulse, it's just a steady static thing, um, you'll see your LH and FSH levels are higher. But the fact that they're low right now doesn't mean it, that your pituitary is messed up or anything. It's normal that they're low if you're on testosterone. Um, the enclomiphene twice a week is going to protect the testicular function from prolonged low LH and FSH because, again, a couple times a week we're going to get that pulse. So you don't, you're not going to have to deal with prolonged um, exposure to that low level because you're pulsing it twice a week. Do the benefits still outweigh the negatives? No. Not unless you have low T. HCG versus enclomiphene. Um, I like HCG better. We just can't really get our hands on it. You know, I preferred it better. It had a little bit better results, but enclomiphene is the best thing we have now, so that's why we use it. It's a great question, by the way. 
Truck driver, I sit a lot, I do mirror replacement, 2,000 calories a day, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah, man, sedentary lifestyle is tough. You know, um, it's just, it's tough. So maybe that 2,000 calories needs to go down to like 1,800 calories with, you know, maintaining a lot of protein. Get as much protein as you can, reduce the calories. At some point when you reduce the calories, you're going to see a tipping point with your fat loss, you know. But again, don't go crazy low because then you're going to start impacting lean muscle and metabolism. So, AOD is great, man. It's a good appetite suppressant. However, um, it is nowhere near as good as semaglutide. I mean, at all. We were doing AOD for years. Um, semaglutide came around about a year and a half ago, and our results with everybody are just so much better. So, if you're going to spend the money, I say spend it on the semaglutide. It's awesome. It's awesome. Hit the weights. Eat healthy. Amen. I'm with you, man. Let's see. What is considered normal range for testosterone? 62, um, zero, basically. Uh, but again, that's not normal, right? You don't want that. If you were to come to our clinic, we would get you above a 150, believe it or not. And there's so much research that supports why we do that now. Um, but testosterone for women is just amazing. And it gets so many women over all of their postmenopausal issues except for the heat related issues like night sweats and um and heat and hot flashes those are very very estrogenic in nature and testosterone is not going to fix those but if those aren't causing you a problem then testosterone alone can fix most of the other uh, peri or peri or postmenopausal issues any issues with taking testosterone hcg and fertility yeah Anytime you take testosterone, it's going to impact your fertility. HCG helps 100%, but if you don't take testosterone, um, your fertility is going to be better than if you do, even with HCG. 100%, right? Like, I promise you. How long does it start? Um, it depends on the work you're putting in, right? If you're killing it in the gym, getting your protein, you know, getting your sleep and managing your stress. Uh, most guys feel it, like up here. You know, with focus and concentration and motivation, and they just feel so much better in four to five weeks, and the rest of your body is going to determine on where you started, right? If you got 300 pounds to lose, it's hard to see that. Or if you're at 300 pounds, if, you, if you're lean and kind of in shape and you, you're working out, you can see results in a couple months. So it just depends on your starting point, unfortunately. I don't like the pellets. We kind of touched on that earlier. Um, not for men. They're fine for women. But there's just too many issues with men. And I can't tell you. Man, we have so many. We've taken on hundreds of patients over the years that hated the pellets so much. You know, so I'm just not the biggest fan. Um, how does TRT affect the pituitary gland? It doesn't, but it affects what the pituitary gland needs to do. It's not going to negatively impact the gland, but it just says, hey, I don't need you anymore. I don't need you to run the LH and FSH hormones as high anymore. So the pituitary just goes, okay, cool, no big deal, right? The hypothalamus drives the pituitary to do certain things based on how much estrogen and testosterone it sees, right? So if it sees plenty, it just says, hey, pituitary, don't worry about this, but it's not going to affect it negatively whatsoever. All right, um, Mandeep, coming through with a badass question. This is awesome. How can I tell if HCG is working for maintaining fertility while I'm on T? You can't tell it with a blood test, right? HCG, the, the molecule is just like, the molecular weight is just like it's barely off from luteinizing hormone, but those luteinizing hormone receptors and the Leydig cells in the testicles, they can't tell the difference, right? So even though it's like one atom off, um, they say, oh, it's LH, the brain must be telling me to make testosterone. So when HCG is present, the testicles just go, okay, cool, let's make testosterone. Um, also sperm. And so the only way to tell if it's working is with a semen analysis. And so, so many guys will get on testosterone, they'll realize their semen um, count is basically zero, their sperm count is zero, and they'll get on HCG for like 100 days. And guys, remember, don't test too quickly if you're looking at this. The spermatogenesis cycle is roughly like 100 days, right? That's from a, just a basic fundamental cell zygote all the way up to a viable sperm. Um, so wait 100 days, then have another semen analysis done. That's the proof in the pudding, if you will. Pudding's probably not the, <laughs> the best <laughs> um, analogy there, but that's the proof that it's working. So 
All right. <clears throat> what should our numbers be at 64? Don't chase numbers, man. Just chase an optimal state. They should be as high as they need to be to make you feel great. Um, I try to get guys to divorce themselves from the numbers and just marry just the way they're going to feel and let that be their goal. Let that be, you know, the, the you know, the, the, the north on your compass to know if it's working right. I have a messed up pituitary gland. Hell yeah. So if your body's not making LH and FSH, and we see this, right, with young guys, you have to get a clinic that knows what they're doing to help manage this, right? Some endos are afraid to give young guys um, testosterone because they're not experts at managing their fertility while they're on testosterone. So a clinic that knows what they're doing is going to be critical for this because also, and this is super important, man, if you're 21 years old and your body's not making any testosterone, you are now so much longer predisposed to these chronic conditions that that low t causes right neurodegenerative diseases osteodegenerative diseases you, you lose that cardioprotective testosterone and so if your levels are low because your pituitary is not working the right way and there's several conditions that cause this um, please make sure that you have a good doctor that knows what they're doing and i mean though this is something that we take a lot of pride in is knowing how to treat young guys when necessary most young guys that are 21 we tell them to piss off lovingly you know encouragingly but we tell them you're not ready you just want to get jacked but for a guy that really needs it we take that person in and we show them love so um if you can't get any help man what's your name again jeff um dude give us a call right you can even ask for me i'm happy to talk to you and so do a body weight and kettlebell workout suffice for resistance training? Absolutely. With good intensity, man, those are beautiful. Absolutely. Um, can low T help dry eyes? No. Afraid not. Where do you get tests from women? Um, same place you get it from men. You know, compounding pharmacies, commercial pharmacies, wherever. It's just you want you need a, a good, to do it the right way, you want a prescriber prescribing it from a legitimate source. Because also, guys, if you're not getting it from legitimate sources, don't take my word for it. Google it. Look at like third-party potency and sterility testing for underground labs. Oh my God! There's no telling what you're getting, bro. I'm on TRT. Can I get HGH? Not from us, man. We'd rather give you a peptide, growth hormone-producing peptides. They work so much better uh, because there's no side effects. They cost a fraction of what growth hormone costs, and um, if you're not putting in the work, you're not going to get results from either one of them. And if you are putting in the work, you're going to get great results from both. So, um, 33 years old, 370 and 13, that's on the lower side, man. You want, might want to get some, get some help with that. So, um, eight weeks still can't perform. It happens, man. Um, so just stick it, you know, stick in there. Or stick with it and also um, considering adding daily use Cialis. It is a godsend uh, for helping bridge that gap because it takes months and months for the testosterone to fix ED. The daily use Cialis, that night, you're ready to go, you know, for a lot of guys. Not all, depending on the severity, but for a lot of guys, just incorporating a, you know, a five to six milligram per day Cialis routine makes a profound difference. Frankie, I wish my doctor would stop treating me off numbers, man. I feel you. It's the bane of our existence. It's crazy. <laughs> Your wife hates pudding? Most do. So, <laughs> uh, I heard myself say that and I'm like, oh my God, I did not just say that, did you? The anabolic, it's a great anabolic, um, side effect heavy, profound androgenic um, strength to it, but guys, we don't ever recommend those. The only anabolic that we can legally recommend is Nandrolone. But I tell you, man, we get these guys out of these gyms all the time. They're on all this stuff, right? They're they're frustrated. They're irritable. They can't sleep. They're, they got night sweats. They got erection issues. They got estrogen issues. And we'll put them on like 200 milligrams of testosterone, epimoralin. We'll make sure their estrogen is right. And they get great results, right? Great results. You know, better than they were getting before because they weren't sleeping. When you're not sleeping, you're not recovering. And their quality of life is just better. And they can have sex with their wife again. So, you know... The antibiotics only work when you use them very, very specifically right, and most guys don't, you know, so. All right, um, what should I expect going into week three at 200 milligrams of test sip? Is that too high? It's not too high for a lot of guys. You're not going to be baseline at your new plateau for about five weeks, so you're on the way up, you know, so uh, you'll start feeling it between the ears with focus and concentration and motivation first. 
The other thing physically you see first are the return of morning erections. Um, and then down the road are the much more deep-rooted physiologic things like weight loss, erectile dysfunction, and muscle gain. So 34 years old, um, started at 310, now 1,000, no big diff. Any way to tell otherwise. Look at your estrogen level. Some guys, if their estrogen's off, they don't feel the benefits of testosterone, and that can be too much or too little estrogen. So start there and then work your way up. We, Jeff, we are located in um, Georgia, but we're, we're in seven states. And guys, while we're doing this, give us some love with these likes. Please um, share this if you don't mind. Try to get this information out there. I've got about another 10 minutes, and um, i got to get off here. So any additional um, questions? So IGF-LR3, it's a good peptide, man. It works. Don't use the drug affinity complex component on it. Some are with DAC. Don't use that stuff. There's been some very like scary results in some studies recently with that. So, um, you know, take that. Mike Hunt says I'm very boring. I am very boring. <clears throat> this is boring shit unless it's interesting to you. Um, any concerns for a stent patient? No, not at all. And in fact, People have one half the cardiovascular events when they're on testosterone done right. This is the most cardioprotective stuff that you can put in your body. Um, don't worry about a stent. If you have like CHF or something severe and you're very advanced, that's different, right? Because this is going to make you want to do more. And if your body's not ready for that, it can be a problem. But as far as like clot concerns or like, oh, I had a heart attack five years ago. What's going on? You know, should I use it? Yeah, I always say it, this is going to protect your heart and support your heart more than anything else. So, Mike in Arizona was at 350. He's at 1,000 now and he feels great. I love it. What causes night sweat, skin burning? Um, night sweats typically are, so there's some peptides that do that. They cause a flushing sensation, like a niacin flush, and also a low estrogen levels causes night sweats. So, those are going to be your two primary culprits. Um, other than something, you know, just like some irritant, like a, an antigen in your, your detergent or your sheets or something like that. So, so Austin, um, man, 21 out of 206, your doctor doesn't quite know what he's doing, but I like the fact that he won't treat you because you're young and he doesn't know what he's doing, right? He's, he's literally protecting you from himself. Um, because he can mess up your fertility and you don't want to do that with a 21 year old. So on this, on my TikTok channel, man, I, there are, there are a few videos that talk about young guys and testosterone and the considerations that you need to be, um, taking. So check that out, please. Just check out our videos. Uh, there's good information and education on there for young guys. And if you need help, call us, man. We're happy to have a conversation with you. All right, Brandon um, Simpson throws out something that is a, an issue that we see constantly. He says, I'm on a 1 ml shot every two weeks. There's an issue with that, guys. The Cipionate has a seven-day half-life. So let's say that 1 ml shot, he takes it on the, he gets it like the day before the first of the month. So on the first of the month, he's at 1,000. Well, he's got to go 14 days now before he gets his next shot, right? So he goes from 1,000 in seven days to 500, and then in seven more days to 250 before he gets his next shot, right? That is a hell of a roller coaster. Um, don't do that, man. Get that testosterone at home. And if you're doing one ml every two weeks, don't even do a half of an ml every week. Do a quarter of an ml twice a week, and you're going to feel so much more steady and so much more baseline um, by doing that. And so, it, and Brandon, it depends on the time of that cycle that you test, right? Don Watt, you're off by one year. I'm 47. Very good guess. All right. I'm only taking prescribed testosterone. Do I need to take anything else? Yeah, man. Um, most likely you want to take something to preserve your testicular function. Some guys, you know, the minority, but they need to take something to manage estrogen levels. Um, if you feel estrogenic symptoms, estrogenic symptoms are PMS symptoms, right? Nipple tenderness, water retention, emotional instability. If you feel like you're PMSing, um, consider getting your estrogen level into an optimal range and also take something to, to protect that testicular function like enclomiphene or HCG. So, all right. Can testosterone and, um, or can HCG and enclomiphene only with no testosterone support that? 
I can't see your name, but that is an excellent question. And the answer is sometimes. The younger the patient, the more likely that a monotherapy with something like implomaphene or HCG will work. But that has to be coupled with the way that patient presents in that the gonadotropic levels have to be low. Meaning if LH and FSH are already elevated, that's what the, the HCG and implomaphene do, right? So if you've got the pedal to the metal on your car and you go to, you're like, oh, I want to go faster. Well, pushing on the pedal more doesn't make your car go faster, right? It's already down. So if those signals are already engaged at a high level, like above a four, um, there's nothing you can do to increase pituitary output that will increase testicular output because, again, the pedal's to the metal. So, But if a young guy presents and LH and FSH are low, we always, at that point, recommend a monotherapy because he may not need testosterone. And if we don't give him testosterone, we don't have to worry about his fertility, you know, and any of the other issues that sometimes come with giving a guy testosterone. So, Jason Goldberg, a summer off of tea, my life is derailed. Yeah, man, we hear this constantly. We get guys that their clinic was shut down or their doctor retired or whatever, and they're like, you know what, I'm just going to go without it for a while, and they'll call us a couple months later, and they're like, man, what the hell did I do? Um, yeah, coming off this stuff when you're used to it is a big deal. The, the thing is this, we lose our testosterone so slowly as men, you don't feel it, right? It's just a gradual thing. It's like the frog in the pot analogy. But when you get back on it, man, you feel it immediately because it's such a fast return. Well, when you drop off of exogenous testosterone, it's also a very fast return to those, those low levels. So you can feel either getting on it or getting off of it big time. And you feel it fast, so... Tumor on the pituitary gland caused the elevated prolactin levels, lowering my testosterone. Um, yes and no. Hyperprolactinemia that is driven by pituitary adenoma. So you have what's called an active uh, pituitary adenoma that sits on the prolactin generating spot on that anterior side. Um, that will 100% drive your prolactin levels up. That doesn't necessarily drive your testosterone levels down, you know. So like half the guys over 40 now have low T. The fact that you have hyperprolactinemia and um, low T at the same time is probably not causative from that exact pituitary tumor. Uh, but again, you had a 50% chance of having low T. So there's something called cabergoline. It is a fantastic drug to limit that um, adenoma's ability to increase prolactin in the body. So it's C-A-B-E-R-G-O-L-I-N-E. -E. Um, look into that. That can help. And also, if you have low T, you got to treat the low T. What's the best testosterone booster that is out there? It is called testosterone. Um, none of the boosters work. They're all bullshit marketing garbage. And look, there are several studies that show them. They obviously, don't go to the study that the the manufacturer of the, the supplement put out, but go to studies like third-party analyses that that evaluate these products. There's never been one that worked. And so, great question by user, big long number. Um, how often do you see young guys under 30 with hypogonadism? It's getting more and more and more prevalent, like all the time. And also, we put out a lot of marketing, or not marketing, but we put out a lot of education for how young guys need to manage their testosterone levels. So we do attract that crowd. But our average age, people think this is an old man's game. Our average age of our patients is like 35 years old. So, yeah, man, it's crazy. And like I said earlier, 50 years ago, the average 30-year-old had twice the testosterone that, well, that they do now. So just your average 30-year-old literally has half of what they used to. So, you know, most guys are walking around at very diminished testosterone levels. So age is... Um, it's, it's not the factor that it used to be. So many guys in their 20s. We have hundreds of guys in their 20s on our program. And we don't just jab people with testosterone. We're not one of those clinics. You have to be thoroughly evaluated. And we carefully consider every patient. We turn a ton of patients away. Um, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of young guys on this stuff. So Mike in Arizona, you're taking 0 0.7 twice a week. So if you're taking 200 milligrams... You are taking, um, of, if you're taking 0.7 of 200 milligrams, you're taking 280 milligrams a week. That's, that's a pretty big dose. If you're taking 100 milligrams of testosterone at that volume, then you're at 140 milligrams a week. So uh, both of those are relatively intelligent. There's a lot of bodybuilders on, you know, five times that high dose. So, um, yeah. 
So the peptides we mentioned are CJC-1295 along with epimoralin. We compound them together. I say we, the pharmacy we use compounds them together. So they're in the vial, they're in the same shot. Um, this is a fantastic combination for growth hormone production. So, All right. Um, I'm on Jeff Goodlett now. 35-year-old taking 200 milligrams of test one time a week with a mixed exogen blocker. Um, 50 IUs of gonadarellin. Gonadarellin is not the best drug, man. It's only got a five-minute half-life. Um, you might want to consider enclomiphene. Um, gonadarellin flashes in your body so fast, it really doesn't have time to do a lot. The studies that show that it works are literally injected with an insulin pump continuously over the course of a day. So that's not, you know, applicable in real life. So take a, uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But otherwise, man, you look good. I like it. Matthew, 10 milligram topical, and you feel great. That's what matters. I'm not a big fan of the topicals, but I'm a big fan of men feeling better. And so I'm glad that's working for you. That's awesome. All right, guys. Well, I have to get out of here. I haven't had lunch yet. Um, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate all the dang, um, the, the positive feedback is just tremendous. You guys are fantastic. If we can do anything for you guys, hit us up. Um, Info at low T nation is a good um, email address. You can just go to the site. We have submission forms and all this stuff on the site too. Um, we're way better at responding to stuff through the site than we are on the socials. The social media comments, uh, they get a little overwhelming sometimes. So if you hit us up on TikTok, be patient. We'll get back to you in a day or two. If you hit us up on the website, it's almost always like same business day that you'll hear from us or next business day. And so, but anyway, I appreciate you guys and all you guys that are, that are, um, our patients that are showing us so much love on here. I cannot appreciate you guys enough. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon.